Welcome to a new Harry's Garage video and today's car is the Ferrari 296 GTB car been really looking forward uh, to getting in the garage and especially so having tested two versions of its big brother the SF90 both of these hybrid cars obviously but this 296 GTB having driven the SF90 this one really intrigues me because it's a simpler version of the hybrid system on a Ferrari. Now, some of you will be wondering about the colours on this car. It's and it's. I have to mention at this point. So this 296 GTB was specced to echo the historic colours of Maranello concessionaires here in the UK. This was Colonel Ronnie Hall's racing team, and he was the importer of Ferrari from very early in the 60s. He he was the man responsible for bringing Ferrari properly to the UK. They hardly sold any Ferraris in the UK before that. And these were his racing colours. Now, whether they translate to a 296 GTB is debatable in my view, but it's a baby blue colour. And if you look back in the 60s when he was racing, he had 250 GTOs um, and other race cars of that period, Ferraris you wanted some way of recognizing your car as it was sort of coming towards the pits and what they used to do was just use a flash of color on the front you notice it on alphas and maseratis sort of a yellow flash brm had that orange flash a bit like the project seven well this was colonel ronnie hall's way of recognizing that was his ferrari coming into the pits i think it's not helped on this car because back in period they generally had borali um, wire wheels on it so alloy wheels rather than a blue painted wheel there were some race ferraris painted blue but that is the history behind this color now getting back to 296 gtb in particular list price 241,560 pounds so about 120 130,000 pounds less than the sf90 and you get v6 rather than v8 but a pacific engine we'll go into details when we look around the back and a single electric motor on the gearbox so no sort of front electric motors as on the sf90 loads to go through let's go and have a closer look and i'll go through the price and some of the options as well now this stripe on it is actually a fourteen thousand four hundred pound option but you can't have it unless you have what on the price list is termed the Ferrano Performance Pack Extended, that kit alone is £25,920. And that is basically track ready. So non-adjustable dampers, titanium springs, various lightweight options, additional carbon bits here and there. Um, it actually adds, what's that together? So with the Stripe 14400 and the £25,000, so you are yeah you are 30 40 000 pound option if you see that on a car those stripes total cost of this car as you see it here three hundred and fifty nine thousand two hundred and twenty seven thousand pounds so an uplift of one hundred and twenty thousand pounds worth of options over the standard car good grief where will it end um, there's a little funny little tea tray spoiler as they term it here in carbon fiber there is so much aero going on with this car it is extraordinary i have found though it hasn't got nose lift if you have this assetto Firano kit no nose lift because as i say the dampers are fixed and the sort of veins underneath i'll show them separately and they do seem to hit all the speed bumps around here so i've had to be particularly careful with this car driving it on the roads around here but overall, the design of this car, I think, is epic. I think it's a return to form for Ferrari after the SF90. It is gloriously elegant, and it does echo some of those cars from the past. It has a flowing look. It's all curves. It's all aluminium as well. Obviously, carbon, if we start at the beginning, yeah, carbon discs, obviously, on all Ferraris now. Different sort of caliper. They say it cool, keeps cool better. Different design of wheels. This car is fitted on Pilot Sport 4S tyres. So, I think you should have cup to, uh, Michelin Cup 2s on here with the um, Firano pack, performance pack on it. Some of the things, that it, there are a number of vents. There's a huge amount of um, radiators at the front, which is basically cooling the engine. They're, load, they're laid really flat. It's a very clever design. 
And then over the top, you have this new sort of spoiler on top of the cabin that rushes air down onto the engine bay. And it needs to do that because this is a hot V engine. Now, first time Ferrari have done that on a production car and it's very clever. If you just come round the back, you can also see what's happening because the, the engine is such a flat V, 120 degree V engine on this. That means it sits super low. It's almost a flat six, you could say, but the exhaust is on top, so they need to get some cooling air into here to cool that exhaust, because the hot point of this engine is right on the very top. Very clever, and that then leads to this high level exhaust here. Now, why that's important on a design of the car on something like this, it means you've got more control over the airflow underneath because you haven't got a hot exhaust sort of manifolds coming down. So it's all sorts of trickery going on. And the significant downforce now on this car at speed is, uh, I think it's 360 kilograms at 250 uh, kilometers an hour. The speed you're always going in, the, your 296 knot. But, Another little clever bit, this is a wing here, this is fixed, this wing, and then this bot pops out as, as braking or whenever it wants, it, the computer in it decides it wants flow, that little wing there pops up and comes into the airflow and like a gurney flap here. I just think it's utterly glorious, the detail of this car. I'm just going to pop the engine loose, you have a closer look. That's on struts. I think this is Lexian, uh, sort of plastic, if you like, rather than glass on this with this kit. Thing to remember about this engine, super, super low. And I love the way they've done this. I was thinking, what on earth is this? It sort of looks very techy. I thought it was a suspension part. No, it's just the top of the um, water coolant. Uh, it's how you, where you refill it, but they've tried to dress it up because it's on show. This side is actually the dipstick. So if I pull out this dry sump, obviously this engine, there, there is the dipstick. The hot V. So there's two turbos up here, catalyst, etc., and then heading out to the rear exhaust. And I think it's a bit of a shame you can't see this actually. It's covered by this heat trim here, but that is the hottest part on this engine. These are the you have to do because it's direct current coming from the battery to the electric motor, which sit on it's sandwiched in between the gearbox, which is back there. But that's what's going on. It's when you actually close it up. It's actually not the bits you want to see as the bits you do see. So you can see the catalyst and stuff. I just think, wouldn't it be better if that was covered? But you can see how the air then rushes through here and it's to flow and suck air out of here. And I love the width of this as well. And having that 120 degree V6 in there has set the engine really low. 663 horsepower they claim from the three litre there, 167 from the electric motor, a total of 830 horsepower, metric horsepower. Just extraordinary power figures for a 3 V6. Is there anything else to show you? Where there's a little, there's radiators here as well. I say this is smothered in radiators. Um, one down here, I think this is, it might be for gearbox. I'm not absolutely sure, oil cooling, that's vented out the back. And then if we look at the scoops here, this is actually for the intercooler engine breathing. This is intake and engine cooler because they want the cold air going into the engine there. You get two uh, fillers on this. This is the fuel this side and electric the other side. I'm going to look in more detail at the interior when we're outside. This car is finished in the Cambridge blue of Marinello concessionaires look and it's got the carbon seats, etc. And you also get the carbon door trim with this Assetto Ferrano kit with a door like that. Now, just have a quick look up the front. And look at that, a proper boot, huge in comparison to the SF90. If only we'd had that when we went to the Isle of Man. There is a tool kit in there and that's your pump and things like that. So anyway, let's take this car outside Let's just see how it drives. Yeah, this car has belts, uh, four harness belts on it, which I do not like on a road car. And I'll also give a little tip on when you're doing these belts up, a bit of a pet peeve, always get the lap belt as tight as you can get it. Oh, like that, pull up on those before you pull on these. And then just pull down on those. And then the lap belt is in the right position. Anyway. Yes, quite a, quite a lot of blue in here as well. 
um, it's, there it is, I energise the car just like SF90, you press it once and it goes auto and sport, I press it again and it says ready. And yeah, it says wireless charging, foreign object on pad. This thing has your wireless charges for your phone down there. It also has the gear changes down here as before. That, uh, their new key, I do quite like the, that key. The huge, no missing, that is the Ferrari. Um, and there's also kind of useful little ledge behind it. Now you see why these belts are such a pain, because you can't turn around. And once you're setting in the seat, tighten them again, and that's how the belt should be. I've got eight miles of range on the electric. It actually gets 15 miles, I've noticed, with a full battery on this thing. 135 mile engine range, but I think that will be better. That's on fuel. And with the Assetto uh, Ferrano kit, you do get these carbon door cards and sort of note pockets etc. Anyway we're ready to go and it will start off in electric. Another slight thing I've noticed it's, it's not quite as precise setting off and going in reverse in electric mode compared to the SF90 and I know the reasons why it's because on the SF90 it's got those electric motors at the front so you're just using those electric motors there. Here there's actually a clutch involved. It's like old school, the F1 gearbox, where it's engaging, the electric engages and the clutch engages. So it's not quite as smooth the sort of takeoff. But minor detail. Let's head out, go find my favourite roads. As ever, it starts off in electric, just like SF90. This high, well, hybrid mode is actually what it sets off in. I do boot it, it yeah, it will start the engine. And we're at 60 miles an hour. <laughs> ah, dear, modern performance cars, crazy things. And then the engine dies. I'm going to put it in performance mode just so the engine doesn't die like that. Civilised in here, relatively speaking. I bet it is. This is my noisy bit of road, and it came out at 78 decibels, so considerably quieter than the GT3. Really simple layouts and instrumentation. I have it so I can see my sort of tar pressures. And then you've got this steering wheel that's more clever than it really should be. Um, I've got View Max if I want the complete dash to become a, a navigation. It's got CarPlay as standard on this car, it's about the only thing that is standard. And I've, oh, I can have this sort of racy sort of dash layout with the revs and the charge and the boost and the speedo just down to the left. The left. I am starting to get used to indicators on the wheel after how many, de uh, almost a decade of exposure to this Ferrari wheel. Still not something I'd choose because McLaren shows you can do it with stalks and have a super elegant wheel, but um, that's all part of it. I'm going to put the view back. I don't know why this sort of goes out, so you have to sort of touch it to make it energise the wheel again if you actually want to swap the dash and that sort of thing. But generally, a good layout. One thing I would not tick an option if I had this car, but instead of Carthage, it's got Alcantara in effect. It is a disaster if you live around us, Cotswolds, and get out onto you know, gravel courtyards and that sort of thing. You bring it straight into the car and it just looks awful. And I will mention the ride, even now I can just feel how choppy it is in this extreme form with this option. If I change the Mantino, the dampers are fixed, so there's no change there. That I'm in sport at the moment, and obviously I have race, and I go all the way back to wet. But that on this car just changes how the stability controls work and the amount of slip it allows, rather than changing the dampers. But basically, really comfy, loads of room behind me as well, no problem with the seating position, really nice, um, no compromised feel like there was in the SF90. I also love the view out the back, it's sort of like a double bubble actually, I've just got a complete flash reflection on it, but rather than sort of looking for a screen, I'm looking for an upright glass screen and then the bubble of the engine cover, a really nice view out. I've got seven mile electric range, so I'm going to put it into qualifying mode, because that, I'm also going to put it into manual, because 
that will actually boost the battery. So if I'm not using all the engine power, it quietly, I can see it's charging, it's charging quite heavily just while I'm going through town. It's using the engine to charge the battery. It's not like a normal hybrid. It's not trying to chase CO2 numbers or anything. Well, it's a little bit, but it's really there to boost performance. Boy, does it do that. Right, here's the deal limit sign. Just to make life a bit more interesting so we can actually hear it, I'm going to go right down to second. So I'm at 30 miles an hour. Just this big intake and this beautifully 
sensual sort of hump of the rear wings. Probably time to go through some likes and dislikes with this car. Kicking off with the dislikes. Well, number one is the, the kit, this Ferrano kit. If you're going to buy this car for road use, do not tick that box. Or if you live in Germany, perhaps you can get away with it, but on UK roads, especially B roads, it will drive you nuts. Another dislike, I mentioned it already actually, the steering, just the electric feel and the fact it's so cluttered with all this switch gear and this haptic controls. Take a leaf out of McLaren's book, how they've simplified the steering wheel. It is a steering device, it's still hydraulic and it's glorious. That's one area where McLaren does beat Ferrari at the moment. And that's about it for the dislikes. I really struggle to come up with some. I had words at the see if you could think of any. Nope. The lights, though, no end. I'm going to join this corner, this corner first before going through the lights. Let's go into here. Third. I think it's a glorious invention. Don't think too hard about the technology. Don't worry about the weight. Just go and drive a 296 GTB. Just the magic is back in this car. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, well, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming on very soon. <laughs>